fire could do a lot of damage. Severe. I was told I'd find one here. I should take out the leader. If Regala had taken the grove.
Say we check everything, so we check. <laughs> I should check if there's anything with a lock around here. Won't be bothering anyone else. I thought I can open that chest with this key I found. Tags. Just like I thought. I do go and want to see these.
Aloy, you're back. Is something on your mind? Maybe. It's about the Tanakh rebels and the Osram. Really? Well, that doesn't sound good. Well, let me know how I can help. I discovered an Osram militant group. They call themselves the Sons of Prometheus. It looks like they're the ones overriding machines for the Tanakh rebels. I thought that was something only you could do. They're familiar with ancient tech, and they're as anti-Karja as it gets. So, last year we stopped Durval and his cronies from blowing up Meridian in retribution for the Red Raids. And now you're telling me we have another group of Asaram trying to wipe out the Karja with... with an army of machines and bloodthirsty Tanakh? Pretty much. Oh, well, that's just great! Is there any way you can help me find out who they are? Anything to track them down and stop them? Yeah, I can send out some messages from Chainscrape. Get in touch with my contacts in the claim, see what I can find out. I'd appreciate that. I see you've got strike set up. Mind if I have a go at it? Really? Uh, sure. Now let's do it. We can play another time if you want. Oh, and I'll let you know if I find out anything more about the Sons of Prometheus. Uh, same here. Hope you didn't run into too much trouble out there. I've gotta go. Don't burn the place down. I won't. No promises for Aaron, though. Thought I heard you come in. Did Gaia tell you anything about Zenith? She did. Though it wasn't exactly easy to believe. To think that there are places it is and hard. I have to go now. Farewell. Must be from the cool route. Between the rock breaker and the slither fang, Regala really wrecked the arena. And I have a feeling she won't stop trying until Hikaru's dead. You look like you've been busy. As do you. I should go. I have training to get back to.
Hello. Hey, you got a second? I suppose. So have you been able to make use of your expertise? I guess so. Gaia transferred a lot of data on Hephaestus to study. And? Any insights? It looks like it's been modifying its code, increasing in size and complexity over the years. There's a lot to analyze still. Okay, well... Keep at it, I guess. So have you been upstairs at all? Not really. Varl sometimes comes down here to talk. He keeps asking if I'm okay. I thought he only wanted to know about my productivity, but... It's almost like he actually wants to talk to me. Yeah, I think he does. Have you talked with anyone else in the base? I speak with Gaia. She asked me how I'm feeling and my opinion on various topics. I didn't expect that from an AI. That's all thanks to Elizabeth. She believed Gaia had to care, not just follow her programming orders. I know. Independent emotional processing enabled the previous version of Gaia to create you, after all. Yeah. I guess so. That's enough for now. Good. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. I'll be right down. Aloy, I have managed to unlock additional rooms within the facility. Got it. I'm back, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. What would you like to discuss? Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. According to my data, however, it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. So, Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. So there's a few people here now, and they're... learning. All about you, the ancient world. Almost like what was supposed to happen before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. 
For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh Plague. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite somber. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. I have elected not to intervene, to allow him to process this on his own terms. When I dove down into Vegas, I found data about the man who built the dome over the city, Stanley Chen. It turns out he was a member of Flora Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? The Zeniths at their core have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still, what he achieved... Water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just waiting for someone to come along and wake it up. I should be going. Goodbye, Aloy. Drone's reconnected now. Looks like I can open that door now. There's a lot of equipment in here. Gaia, what was all this for? This room was designed for management of the facility's vast seed banks. From here, control center operatives would have monitored new crop rotations into the automated farmlands, now known as Plainsong. I see. I've been tackling the design of the Ag Lab. Place is gonna have a lot of seed stock to work with. My favorite? Sample 626. Calotropis gigantea. The crown flower. We used to have one in our backyard. Butterflies always fluttering around. Every morning, August would run out there to check under the leaves. See if any caterpillars had turned into chrysalises. Now, I'd like to imagine that the future will be filled with them. According to this console, there are still thousands of plant samples stored deep below the facility. I could ask Gaia about them the next time I talk to her.
I don't think that door had power before, but looks like it's malfunctioning. Looks like some kind of maintenance space. Did it? Uh, Aloy? A bunch of lights just turned on up here? Is that you? Oh. Huh. Yeah, I guess it was. Hi! <laughs> Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure does love his little big man. She found that recording from the data on your focus. She's been watching it a lot. I think it helps calm her. You know, I used to watch this a lot too. Whenever I wanted to take my mind off things. Daddy sure does love his little bit. But there's something you need to tell me. While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, Beta? She's been thinking about how to capture Hephaestus, studying the data Gaia gave her. But we started talking about some other stuff. You know, just getting to know each other, right? And then she told me that one of the Zeniths might be different from the others. Tilda. You saw her at the Hades Proving Lab. Go on. On the way to Earth, the Zeniths never showed their faces. My servitor caretaker referred to them as my benefactors, and promised I'd meet them someday, when I had learned enough. And then, one day, a data channel opened in my training interface. In it, Tilda was waiting for me, in a virtual replica of a house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was beautiful. She showed me paintings, books, media files. We met there in secret many times. But a few months later, it stopped. Can you tell us why, Beta? I found some data about Tilda at the Hades Proving Lab. I think she was a liaison between Far Zenith and Zero Dawn. She knew Elizabeth Sobek, that's for sure. Maybe that's why she reached out to you? What else can you tell us about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth, she was an expert programmer, given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? 
It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And you're sure the other Zionists never knew about it. To them, it looked like I was still in training, toiling away, alone. So this secret virtual space looked like a house with an ocean view? I could see white caps and hear waves crashing on rocks below. And there were gulls crying outside. Inside, Tilda had frames that showed off her favorite paintings, changing at intervals to match the light. There was an armchair she liked. She'd sit there and gaze outside while I looked through her things. We spent hours in that house. I never wanted to leave. You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me a new painting. I, I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose kid comes back after disappearing during the hot zone crisis. Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. So Tilda set up a secret virtual space where she could talk to you, a house on a cliff. Then later, she cut you off. But other than the fact that Tilda knew Elizabeth, you don't know why she did those things? I don't, okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. When I finally met the others, she ignored me. I acted like the Data Channel never existed. None of this even matters. Tilda's the same as the others. It won't help us defeat them. Okay. Let's leave it at that, then. What's wrong? I'm trying, Varl. But she is tough to take. I'm out there in the wilds, risking my life every day, and all she can do is hide in there and tell us how hopeless it all is. I'm sorry, she's had a rough time, but she is really not helping right now. Hmm. You always seem to be on top of everything, so I sometimes forget about what you've been through. I mean... It wasn't that long ago you were so banged up you couldn't even walk. About that. When I pulled you out of the water back near the Proving Lab, you were muttering Rost's name. You never talk about him. But he raised you. Trained you. You must miss him a lot. Of course I do. But I don't have time to think about that now. I need to get back out there. Okay. I'll keep working with Beta. Gaia says she knows a lot about Zero Dawn. And maybe she just needs some time to adjust, and then she can help us with Hephaestus. Sure. But I won't hold my breath.
you. Hey, I just, uh, wanted to see how you're doing. I'm fine. And look, about earlier, forget it. Was there anything else? What else can you tell me about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth... She was an expert programmer, given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And you're sure the other Zeniths never knew about it? To them, it looked like I was still in training, toiling away. Alone. So this secret virtual space looked like a house with an ocean view? I could see white caps and hear waves crashing on rocks below. And there were gulls crying outside. Inside, Tilda had frames that showed off her favorite paintings changing at intervals to match the light. There was an armchair she liked. She'd sit there and gaze outside while I looked through her things. We spent hours in that house. I never wanted to leave. You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me a new painting. I... I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose kid comes back after disappearing during the Hot Zone Crisis. Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. I'll be going. Okay. Bye. you want to punch something more like someone but you're the one that helped me find it people make mistakes Aloy uh, it's everything all right it, it seemed like you and Varl were down at that basement for a while yeah everything's fine I guess well okay uh, what can I do for you? You still sifting through loads of data? Yeah, it's interesting. There's lots of 
words. I, I thought maybe I could try finding things with more, you know, pictures in it. Not much luck there, but I, I did find out about these uh, hollow films, like images put together to tell a story. Uh, they were made to look like they were the real thing. You know, the Osaram like shows. I bet they pay a lot of shards for those hollows. Seems like you're getting a hang of this data thing. Yeah, it's been helpful. When I could make sense of anything. I did find the old ones enjoyed a good brew like the rest of us. Only they let machines serve the stuff in bars. They even let the damn things cut you off before you saw the underside of a table. Uh, that's half the fun. Now, you won't see me letting a robot serve me a pitcher anytime soon. How are things going around here? Yeah, you tell me. Varl's new girlfriend tried to kill me earlier. What did you do? I made one joke about how they, you know, eat grass a lot. How does anyone fight with nothing but tree leaves in their stomach anyway? From the looks of it, the Utaru. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. Just try not to get hurt. I see someone's been playing Strike. I'm just trying to get some practice in. Helps take my mind off things. You should try playing Katalo. It's a Tanakh game. Maybe you'll learn something. Oh, sure. Tanakh. I'm sure he won't try and kill me if I win? Pretty sure. Do I smell... ale? I brought some over from Chain Scrape. Hey, with everything that's been going on, I thought we could all use a drink. Besides... There is nothing that brings people together like a good brew. That's what my sister always said, anyways. You're more than welcome to have some. Maybe another time. I should get going. Back to reading, I guess. Do be careful out there. Hey, got a sec? Of course. How's training? Discovering something new about our past every day. When we first met, you asked me if I ever wondered what this world looked like when the old ones lived here. I had thought it was strange at the time, but a lot has changed since I left the Embrace. Now I'm just trying to make sense of everything I thought I knew, and versus everything I know now. The change is hard, but it gets easier over time. You feeling okay? I was just thinking about Beta and all that time spent with the Zeniths. To think someone would make a person just to lock them in a room to use when needed, like some sort of tool. Elizabeth Sobek sacrificed herself for the world, and yet they have no trouble treating Beta like a slave. Another reason we have to stop them. It's hard to believe we're dealing with the original Zeniths. The same ones that left for Sirius a thousand years ago. To live on for so long, it doesn't seem natural. Because it's not. That weapon we found where Beta was hiding, any chance we can use that against them? Silence made sure that wasn't an option. Why would he build something to hurt Far Zenith, yet allow them to capture you? With Silence, there's always an angle. We just don't know what it is yet. What do you make of this Tilda the Beta was talking about? Well, the way she described it, I can't shake off the feeling that Tilda wanted something from Beta. Maybe because she's Elizabeth Sobek's clone? But whatever she wanted, I don't think she got it. If we knew what it was, maybe we could use it to our advantage somehow. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't think Tilda and Elizabeth were on the best of terms. Oh well. At least we can take some comfort in knowing the Zeniths don't trust each other. Maybe. You brought up Rost before. I do think about him. You know, he was all I had. And he brought me up the best he could. Not only that, when Hades discovered who I was and sent the Eclipse after me, he sacrificed himself so I could survive. But that seems like ages ago. So much has happened since. What I'm doing now, I don't think he could even begin to understand it. The Sacred Lands were all he really knew. So I can't let myself dwell on him. Not with everything I have to do. I understand. Sometimes, when I think about my sister, about what she would have become if she had survived the Proving, it hurts. And I just need to bury it for a while. But only for a while, Aloy. You can't ignore it forever. Memories always come back. The ones that matter, anyway. I know. But for now, the mission has to come first. Fair enough. I should get back out there. We'll be here if you need us. Aloy. Hey, how's everything going? I am well, but Varl told me Beta's having a hard time adjusting to life here with us. I wish there was something I could do to help. I'm not sure any of us can. A tree won't bear fruit in a day. We'll do our best to make her feel welcome. Found anything else combing through that data? Varl and I have been looking into the animals of the old world. Apparently there used to be thousands more species roaming around than there are today. Can you imagine that? I'd give anything to see them. Even as holograms. Though I know that without Artemis or Apollo that may prove difficult. At least I can find comfort in knowing Gaia used many of them as inspiration for her machines. Her memory honors them. What are you going to learn next? I'm not sure. I asked Gaia for suggestions and she brought up data you found on something called a Museum? From what I gather, the Old Ones would store knowledge in them for all to see and learn from. Like you've done here, for us. Maybe one day, more people will be able to use this place to learn the way we have. That sounds... crowded, but nice. Are you guys training with Erend as well? If you count trying to stick a spear in his gut as training, then yes. I've been told. Please tell me you weren't being serious, though. Of course not. Good. I was going for a couple of broken bones. He called the Utaru leaf grazers. Laughed at the idea of us simple farmers being formidable fighters. Before I knew it, he and I were battling it out in the common room. The man is slow, but he can throw a hammer around. Don't look so worried. We're evenly matched. For now. Next time he's going down like a load of boar dump. Just try not to kill each other. Injuring his pride should be good enough. The Zenith did a number on Beta. But she seems to trust Varl. I still can't believe she told him the Zeniths are immortals. Old ones who cut themselves off from the cycle of life and decay. I've never heard of anything so selfish. To deny our dying bodies to the Earth. To doom the life that would bloom in their place. It's... despicable. Is there anything I can help with around here? Hmm? Oh, no. We're doing fine. Are you okay? You and Varl have been friends for a while. I like to think so. I was wondering... 
What do you know about his mother? Oh. That bad, huh? Why do you want to know? He's spoken of his sister, Vala, but... I noticed he avoids talking about his mother. She's the war chief of the Nora. Best warrior the tribe's ever known. Tougher than a Thunderjaw, but she could be pretty harsh at times. I see. That must have been hard on him. Thank you for telling me. I feel silly not being able to ask Varl directly. I wouldn't worry about it. He's probably afraid Sona will scare you off someday. I'd like to see her try. I should get going. Good luck on your search. You need something? I should head out. Let me know if you need me. Plugging in that power cell downstairs must have turned on these holograms. in peril, and we fight amongst ourselves. Mind if we have a word? Of course not. It must be strange, seeing everything through a focus now. I can see machines like never before. Their strengths and weaknesses simply reveal themselves to me. To think that such a tiny object might be the most powerful weapon I've ever possessed. What do you think of this place? It must take some getting used to. It's an efficient center of operations, and an acceptable training facility. Though it could use some more... color. Duly noted. Does it still hurt? It comes and goes. I try not to think about it, but its absence is always present for me. It's difficult to explain. I can't claim to understand. Only empathize. Then you have my thanks. Have you spoken with Erend at all? I've had little chance to. I did see him bring some ale from out east. That stuff's as bitter as self-brush. You get used to it, eventually. In fact, I wouldn't mind a drink myself. I'm sure Aaron wouldn't mind sharing. I should get going. If I can help in some way, say the word. I will. Thank you. Hey, Gaia. I'm back. So I see what is on your mind. The Zeniths. 
Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. I think Elizabeth knew one of them. Tilda. Did she ever mention her to you? No. Elizabeth often spoke of her work, or told stories of her mother and her childhood. If she knew this Tilda, she did not disclose it with me. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. To protect life on Earth, they must be stopped. So I talked to Beta. Didn't learn much. It seems to me you did. From what she describes, the Zeniths controlled every aspect of her life, even as they shunned her. This Tilda was the first person she ever had contact with. An abrupt severance of such a relationship would be very emotionally damaging. Yeah, I guess you're right. I found some data in one of the rooms you unlocked. It mentioned that there are still functional seed banks beneath this facility. Why is it there? My predecessor was tasked with reconstituting the biosphere with primary and secondary plant species. Had everything gone according to plan, humans would have eventually been able to introduce tertiary species, including new crops. Can we access them now? Unfortunately, it will have to wait. I require control over the machines in order to access and distribute the preserved seed stock. And for that we need a Festus. It's something to look into later then. I'll be on my way. I wish you safe travels. How much snow is going to pile up? It's a Horus, Hanon. Just broke through the perimeter. Erica, the mobile cover prototype is in the vault. All three keys are required to override the lockdown. Can you bring me the one from your security console right away? Okay. Just don't get killed before I get... Erica? Erica! So 
Sounds like I need three of these keys to get to the mobile cover system. Those coordinates for another console won't flow. I should check it out.
Poe, going somewhere important. Whoa! I heard that the dig site is clear of machines. We owe you. Now, if I can only wrangle these Osaram into moving our equipment back over there. Uh, just so. I is there something else we can do for you, Savior? I'll get going then. We're on to something big. As sure as the sun sets, the sun has truly shined upon us this day. Right through that metal.
These are the coordinates I got from the console I found. Which means there should be another one somewhere around here. Got the override fixed. I can use it on Ravagers now.
Still in this fight. Place looks like some sort of old defensive outpost. Another console. security key to get the mobile cover prototype out of here. Get to the console and get it out of here! We have a second enemy contact incoming! Another horse! Someone call in that goddamn airstrike! Another access key that never got to this prototype. There's coordinates for a third one nearby. Maybe I can find it.
Claro will make things easier. I know where that flight recorder is if I need it. shows there's another recording in there. Recorder transmitting a signal. Maybe I can track it down.
I found lead here. There's got to be another one of those consoles around. Side, Doc. Done, thank God. The mobile cover prototype is locked in the vault. I need all three keys to open it, including yours. Nope. VP rank means I've got a golden ticket to Elysium. If you want that key, come back and get it your... Uh-oh. Well, Don was a real charmer. Typical for Pharaoh, I guess. That's three access keys. And... another set of coordinates. Tempted to go in the first place.
can climb my way through those rocks. She can tough out the cold. Frost won't help. Looks like a facility used to be here. This place got hit hard. The vault mentioned in the recordings should be in here somewhere. We just have to follow the coordinates.
Try using something other than shock ammo. This looks promising. I'm guessing this was Hernan. This must be the vault mentioned in the data I found. I should be able to access it. something out of it if I use the data on that drive Gendos found. I don't want to know what happened here. You've returned. You found something, didn't you? Come now, don't just keep it to yourself. It's, um, difficult to explain. Please, I... I just want to understand as much as I can. Definitely not a tray cover. The Old Ones fought a massive battle here, against machines. Some fled, 
But others stayed behind to try to salvage this. To help others carry on the fight. Did they survive? So... They failed. It made it into the hands of the most renowned warrior in the Sundom, did it not? And every item we recover will be used to ensure their memory lives on. I didn't see any machines at the dig site, so yes, I suppose that is true. I'll need that tray and your workbench. I'll have to tinker with this to turn it into something I can use. Of course, Savior. It's the least we can do. May the sun light your way, as you have illuminated ours. Let's take a look at this thing. Wait till the scholars hear about this! We'll go down in the history books! I'm glad you found out what happened. Feels right. Time to test it out. Almost ready to go? Oh, yeah. You ever wonder if this is worth it? Out You're dead. Well, that's on me. I'm telling you, don't throw good shards after bad. <laughs> She's my sister, not an investment. Tell me where she went. No, I refuse. Maybe following the two guys here, but my crews are here, but they're better for you. I was told you went down to the sound by yourself. Sister! Over here! Remember, the patent. Hey, I thought you'd left by now. <laughs> <laughs> to 
Ignoring me again! Good. Only a matter of time before they do it. And return to the teller of tales. Who smiled warmly with the promise of another adventure. Hope they got what was coming to them. Stemmer, did you need something? As a new dream dawned for the adventuring trio, they returned to the depths of the formerly sunken city. Where fortune was found behind every crumbling wall as a bulging cake bursts with free-flowing ale. That is, we broke our way into more of the ruins below, and in one of them, the wordsmith beheld a glimmering gizmo, a wonder among a sea of wonders. Alas, the gizmo lay beyond his grasp. You saw some kind of gizmo but couldn't get it? A door bars the way, locked by some confounded means. Moreland contemplated explosives, but Abaddon thought the odds of crushing the gizmo under rubble were too high. For once, the shard counter skepticism might be warranted. The old wordsmith's hopes were dashed, until a friend with a knack for performing the impossible returned from beyond the sands. Might I persuade you to venture beneath the desert once more? I'll see what I can do. Where is this place? Once you're down there, take a ride at the statue of the giant man. The ruin rests beside a metal tower. And so our heroine went forth, and the wordsmith's hopes went with her. Ah, Red! Just who I need. You know her? Great! Then tell her that going out there is a bad bet. Well, you tell him. He better crank out what he knows before I pummel him in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Della. What's going on? It's my sister, Boomer. She ran off into the desert. We, uh... We had a fight. I told her we'd discuss it in the morning after we both had time to cool off. But when I woke up, she was gone. And Spectacles over here was the only one to see her leave. But he refuses to tell me which way she went. You can't go striking off into the desert. You'll get lost. And if thirst doesn't kill you, the vanishing dread will. You know what happened to the Delvers who went out there last? No, you don't. No one does, because they didn't come back. Well, what about my sister? She's out there all alone. Maybe she's a sunk cost. <laughs> I'm asking you, Red. Help me find her. What's the vanishing dread? That's what Stemmer calls the machine that stalks the sands out there. Sometimes you'll see it in the distance. A stationary blur of metal. It'll stay like that for hours. And then the next time you look, gone. Like it was never there. But what kind of machine is it? Don't know. No one's ever gone close enough to find out. A few of those Delvers went out there once, but all they found was a bunch of sand dunes. But I don't care what it is. It's not gonna stop me from finding my sister. The argument you had with Boomer? What was it about? Well, it started out as the same old spark and boom. I found her tinkering with one of my prototypes, trying to add explosives, as usual. And when I reminded her that the last time she did that, she nearly burned the whole place down, she just looked at me and shrugged. Then we got into this whole scorched out mess about why we had to leave Chainscrape and come out here. And why for the love of the forge, she has to blow everything up. And what did Boomer say? Well, that's the thing. She didn't say anything. She just sat there ignoring me. Even when I went to bed, not a word. And then, when I woke up in the morning, she, she was gone. She's never done that before. But knowing her, she's gonna get in some kind of trouble out there. And that's why I need to find her. What brought you and Boomer out west? Ah, uh, that. There was an accident in Chainscrape. An explosive accident? Well, 
You know how Boomer is. So we grabbed our tools and skipped town. Heard about a caravan striking out west after some passage got reopened. Decided to join up. But why come out here? You could have gone anywhere. Eh, can't really go back to the claim, and anywhere else is a little too... inhabited. At least out here, there's less chance of collateral damage. Besides, this place is gonna be a destination one day, right? Dad always said, get in early. If you think I can be bribed, know that I only take shards up front, no credit. Maybe we got in too early. If Boomer's lost in the desert, I might be able to find her. I'm coming with you. All this is my fault anyway. But you'll die. Where did you last see her? I suppose if you're with her, the odds of survival do go up. I thought I saw her heading towards the metal arches east of here. Then that's where we'll start. I'll meet you at the arches. Okay. Join me there as soon as you can. Despite what I said before, I hope you find Boomer. On your way, then. And, um, don't die out there. Aloy! Oh, your timing couldn't be better. Over here! Aloy! Oh, this is a grand day. Greatness is in the air. Or will be soon. Greatness, huh? Behold, I call it Moreland's amazing elevating orb. 
inspired by the floating spheres the Banuk use for their clan contests. When aloft, this grand construction will be a spectacle henceforth unseen by the eyes of the living. Unburdened by gravity, it'll be a floating beacon, drawing people from great distances to our destination of wonders and amusement. Except... We're missing one key piece. A mechanical burner. Small, magnificent design. Old world ingenuity at its peak. We found it when we opened up more of the ruins below and discovered numerous statues of strange winged serpents. One such statue had the burner in its mouth. Oh, no doubt part of some ancient fire-filled spectacle. Oh, Aloy. It's perfect for the orb. But a swarm of burrowers chased us out before I could grab it. Could you get it? Please? Okay, Moreland, you got me. I'm curious. I'll get it for you. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. Okay, okay. Head down to where we fought that Tide Ripper after you drained all the water. When you get down there, head right and look for a room to the side. The statue you want is up high, looming like a nightmare. Got it. I'll see what I can do. Stupendous. Thank you. I await your return. <laughs> Okay, there's the giant statue that Stemmer mentioned. The ruins should be nearby. We can get use of this. Because most demos after should be inside.
of the colorful city inside the dome. around here. I never know. The image was taken from somewhere above ground level. Maybe there used to be a bridge around here? sweating everywhere.
break my fall? was taken from somewhere above ground level. Oh, there used to be a bridge around here? We can get a good view of the city from this overhang. We should try to line up the image here. Did it?
This looks like the place. No burrowers, though. And that must be the statue. Okay, I gotta find a way up there. to the upper level. Maybe I can find something to stand on? There's a crate in that room. This could be useful. to reach the statue.
Now to get the burner. I'm cooking my armor in this heat. Made it. Whoa! Well, I got the burner. Better take it back to Moreland. that attacked Moreland. when I need it. Next stop, Moreland's amazing elevating orb. Could have extra. I think I'm in the right place. Now, where's that gizmo?
There. That must be the gizmo. Looks like this door needs a code to open. I should check around the ruin, see if I can find anything that might help. What's in here? Huh. So the gizmo is actually called an ornament. I found one of these in another ruin. It sounds like there are more out there. And it looks like there's part of a code. Might be for the door. I better keep looking around. Maybe I can find the rest of it. to another part of the ruin. But how to get to it? There's an opening at the top of the fence. Could be a way in, if I can find a way to get up there. I can't pull this out. It looks like the crate on top's blocked.
Sweat, and I'm still not cooling off. See where this leads. Oh, a 
I'm back outside. What else is up here? Looks like the ornaments were part of something called the Knights of Lights holiday promotion? A way to celebrate old world holidays by changing the holograms above ground? But how? Well, another part of the code's here too. I should have what I need to open the door. Got it. Time to head back up to Stemmer. Maybe we can figure out how to make this thing work.
Anyone looking to play a game or two of Machine Strike? Oh, hi! Just like my you mother might cooked them. On the I don't know. The Nora returned, but did she bring tidings of triumph or misfortune? I got the gizmo, and it's not the only one I found. Here. The old wordsmith, a keen spark in his eye and gratitude in his heart, held aloft the gizmo that had eluded him. It's called an ornament, actually. Part of a set. I think there are more scattered in ruins beyond the desert. I might be able to track them down. And so the mystery of the ornament deepened. For what purpose were these trinkets designed? Something called the Knights of Light's Holiday Promotion. It's a way the old ones celebrated special occasions, I think. Like feasts? Kind of. I think a holiday marked a seasonal event? And so does every feast in the claim. There's the Feast of the First Keg, the Feast of Fermentation, the All Hops Feast. All about ale, huh? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Anyway, these ornaments could supposedly change the lights above ground, but I'm not sure how. Hmm. I recognize this marker. Saw the same on a little device we unearthed. Here. I might be able to turn on the lights. Mm, time to find out. Which one should I try first? Let's put this one up. By our heroine's word, the lights would dazzle the sky. Ah, this must have been the feast of the crescent moon. But they couldn't have celebrated every crescent moon, could they? By the forge, that'd be a lot of feasts. Let me know if you find any more of those ornaments. I wonder what other holidays the old ones celebrated. From journeys unknown, the Nora returned to the teller of tales and keeper of ornaments. So, did you want to change the lights? This one seems good. I hope Abaddon is ready for this. Showers of sparks and serpents. Whatever they were celebrating, it must have been quite a festival. I noticed machine riders earlier. They seemed like they were racing or something. So she entered once more, our heroine whom all adore. So, are you feeling festive? Take your pick. Let's go with this one. I'll get right to it. The crescent moon rose above the ruins once again, like a sliver of glowing ember in the heart of a darkened Thank you. 
You're back! Did you get it? Do you have the device? Oh, please say you do. Oh, we're so close to something truly just majestic. Here you go, Moreland. Yes! Yes! Thank you. I hope getting it wasn't too much trouble. Oh, this design, it's so compact. Oh, the ancients knew how to make them. It should fit the housing like a dream. Just need to cinch up the blaze leads and away we go. Uh, we? Make the maiden flight without the maiden who played such a vital part? My mother raised me better than that. You should have the honor of seeing the world in a way that no one alive has ever seen it. How about it? How can I say no to that? Was that? Nah, nothing to worry about. We have a sturdy tether connecting us to the ground. Pure Osirum craftsmanship. Well, time to give it a little flame. Aha! We ascend! Behold, the world beneath our feet. Ah, the sky at our fingertips. The burner heats the air inside, which gets lighter than what surrounds it. So we rise. Indeed. We're powered by hot air. Just like Stemmer. <laughs> but don't tell him I said that. We are on the cusp of history. The first successful Osirum flight. There have been other attempts? Oh, yeah! The history of Osirum flights is fascinating. And, you know, violence and frequently incendiary. I feel like you should have mentioned this before. Ah, the others failed because their machines were too heavy and complex. They were begging to crash. Not here. Just a pilot compartment, blaze, a burner, the orb, and a tether. Within simplicity, there is perfection. Well, at least, you know, less chance of exploding. You know, if Abaddon were here, he'd be drunk like a wastrel, crippling fear of heights. That said, he gets poetic when drunk. He has evocative rhymes about all his various ledgers. A little known fact, Osram poetry started as work songs and forges around the claim. Ah, just a bit of turbulence. We shall tame these wild skies yet. <sighs> This feels like more than turbulence. Uh, for the record, that was not part of the planned aerial experience. What is that? Uh, yeah, I think our tether just came undone. Moreland! Oh, <laughs> that's just a small step back. Nothing to... Worry about! I can take this! I can take this! I can! Right, these bastards! And it's gonna hit us! Stay back! No! Hey, hey, go away! Go! Shoo! Go. Morland. He's in danger. I have to get to him. No! Ah! No! Gotta follow his voice. Morland's stuck on the other side. I've gotta clear out these machines. Charlestown, who could help you?
Okay, that's the last one. Better check on Morland. Hold on, Morland! I'll get you out! Aloy! Great gears, you're alive. Uh, would you mind applying a little leverage? Oh, I can definitely find a use for this. My lucky day. For a suboptimal flight, I have accepted your feedback, and I thank you for it. Now please, get this thing off me! Your sudden and decisive departure was not something I was expecting! No sorry. Hey, you alright? Oh. oh, when that maelstrom hit us... Everything fell apart. I remember dropping, and then you tumbled out, and... That's okay. We're alive. You know, in terms of Osram aviation, <laughs> we're pioneers. And they say it's a cursed field of study. <laughs> Do you need help getting back to camp? Yeah, no, I can make it. But I need to get the burner. It fell off when we were attacked. I, mean, I can replace everything else. Except that. Okay, let's go. Do you have any idea what hit us? I couldn't get a good look at it in that maelstrom. Between the screeching and the lightning, it was probably a storm bird. Woof! Hideous machine. Well, at least it vanished with the storm. Mind finding a way across? I think Only I found a us something a bridge. to bridge the gap. I'll mark the spot in my focus. Come back later. Efficient and effective. <laughs> Make a fine Osiram. I see it. The burner is right below that storm bird. Ah, yeah. I really need to stop making predictions on what's safe. It's gotta be the same one that brought us down. We'll have to kill it to get the burner. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be.
Over here, when you have a moment, steal to my soul. Oh. oh, I think that Stormbird had it in for me, or really fancied my orb. Can't get rid of the vines. Not yet, anyway. Found it. <laughs> ah, just a hairline crack in the casing. Yeah, I can clean that up with a bit of spot welding. Assuming the ground doesn't open up and swallow us, I, I'm gonna say we're finally safe. Yet again, you risked your life for me and my ambitions. I wish I had Stemmer's words to thank you properly. If it helps, you've inspired me to draft up a new improved orb, something that unites spectacle and survival. Uh, I'm honored, but I think I'll let Abaddon and Stemmer have the next flight. I'll see you back at the camp. I have so much to think about, so many ideas to explore. Until we meet again, may your tools never break, and may your imagination never find its limits. You too, Morlock.